The sitting is resumed. When the suspension was taken, we were on order number 21, and with that, we shall continue. Honourable Member for St. Thomas. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. Ma'am, I'm going to start on a sad note. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I am extremely concerned about the future of my country, Barbados. I've lived nowhere else. I have worked nowhere else. But I have witnessed a kind of tribalism in the political arena that continues to destroy the fabric of our society that our foreparents, our forefathers and mothers have worked so hard to be able to lay those solid foundations that we should live together in peace and unity and to serve our country to the best of our ability, knowing full well that it is not what our country can do for us, but what we can do for our country. And that has also been my mantra and indeed the mantra of many hundreds of bar thousands of Barbadians. I am saddened to this, ma'am, to see what has happened to one of the best citizens that Barbados has had, working assiduously in the Rural Development Commission as a director, and where politics has caused him to be a statistic today because of the decapitation that took place with this government the very first working day of 2008, after the election, rural development, the director sent home unceremoniously, as well as that of the Urban Development Commission. And to this day, ma'am, not one red cent that that man could raise his family and pay for his house. No wonder why, but he has died with his dignity in his sleep, and I'm sure that too many of us in Barbados in the political arena would take sense and make sense out of that and change this whole political tribalism aspect out of the way because at the end of the day, who hurts? Those people in NCC, those persons in school meals, those persons who are janitors and teachers and others at the end of the spectrum some of them have never uttered a political word is to do with where they live and who they are associated with. And it hurts my heart that today to have to make mention of that, but I shall continue to make my contribution because I have been privileged by God and then the people of St. Thomas to be here to represent not only their interests, ma'am, but the interests of all Barbados because sometimes only a road or a track separates constituencies, but that we are one people at the end of the day. And I want that unified front to go forward. We will have our own fallout over personal matters and political issues and policies and so, but at the end of the day, we are one people who must carry Barbados forward. And the example we set, our children and our youth and others are taking it in. It is the wrong way to go because we could not hear what took place in the records of this parliament when we were younger because we didn't have the technology or we didn't have the resources to be able to even come to town, furthermore enter this distinguished chamber, this honorable chamber. But we heard um, the radio sometimes and we saw extracts in the newspaper where there were almost fist fights already. But at the end of the day, those colleagues and members on both sides saw eye to eye on issues for the advancement of Barbados. But I want to say, ma'am, I don't even want to call it Lost Barbados now as it did when our, um, the explorers came across this country. It would be wrong of me to do that, but the way I'm seeing things go now, we are heading down a road where the decay in this country, socially, economically, and otherwise, has taken hold of a situation where we know we had a country that stood proud as an example that we shared best practices with our brothers and sisters in the Caribbean and the rest of the world. And I'm saddened as to where we are today under this clueless government with Democratic Labour Party members and people in Barbados are suffering. And when I speak of suffering, ma'am, I speak it because I've lived it and I know it because people around me, people in St. Michael, St. Philip, St. John, wherever, they call to say, Miss Ford, I want to discuss. Or they call me by my Christian name. 
because they are suffering as a result of the draconian measures that have impacted upon them and their existence, and they had become accustomed to a better life as a result of the policies and programs of former governments. Ma'am, I want to refer to the Honourable Member for St. Philip Wess's comments in 2015 February. And uh, I just want to make a comment in my own language because I'm not dealing treating to the document. The document would not have been to my, um, in my access. But at the meeting in Rice St. Philip in 2003, May the 7th to be exact, he said not in BIM. And the Alma member was making reference to the Barbados Labour Party regime where the Senate will not allow the then Prime Minister of that time to visit the same level of economic woes on Barbados that had befallen the other Caribbean territories. The Honourable Member went on to say, I will not be taken down a path that will lead or result in mayhem, crime, destruction, economic unrest. And I agree with him on that one. He further proceeded to, proceeded to lambaste the BLP's leadership of attempting to rob Barbadians of their self-respect by encouraging mendicancy, dependence on politicians, rather than reliance on the thrift that was the trademark of our forefathers. And I respect the Honourable Member for St. Philip West for being so bold to make those comments, but ma'am, I would think that, I would say that the Honourable Member had a vision. He might have been robbed by a kiss by a prophet or an angel because we have now lived to see precisely what the Honourable Member referred to come to light. Ma'am, where is the agricultural plan? Where is the agricultural plan? That's my question. To reduce the food import bill in Barbados and bring all these thousands of acres of uncultivated land into food production. St. Thomas is like a forest in most instances. And I know that the doctor, the professor at the university who's going to be working on that project is trying hard, and I understand that the Chinese would have funded it to be at Duke in St. Thomas, but it is now five years almost late. But it has, a, it has rolled out a vision for where we could go with a project that will suit these times we're living in. My second question, I don't want the honorable member for St. Philip West to ask me that because I passed and I saw it. Some of the ministers on the other side, man, do not even give a simple invitation to a member of parliament when they want to do things in the constituency. And then we have to be, I, I, I am not interested, ma'am, in hearing the honorable member for, Saint, for Christchurch South, who should be up on the South Coast now to help to ameliorate the problem, or who should be at the Queen Elizabeth Hospital Check in to see the drink machines that have now been moved from inside of the hospital on the outside by the, the, the pedestrian crossing, and an old woman is sleeping in a box between those three drink machines. <laughs> the honorable member for say, for Christchurch South should check the portfolio he is on and leave out the golf. He's doing a half day job, ma'am, when the days come. Visit the hospital, I've got the photograph, I will show him, I took it one Sunday ago. But ma'am, my other question is, what is the plan to lift our people out of the mendicant grip that they have been brutally placed in? Barbadians want to work honestly, ma'am. They don't want handouts. They don't want to be seen in any picture, getting a smart TV or a tablet or a thousand baskets of food. I want them to feed a man to fish and not give a man a fish. Barbadians are now waiting to get a fish that would only last for one or two meals because this government, without the vision, has led us down a path of destruction in a social and economic way. They want to build their homes. They want to build their mortgages. It's the first time in my more than six decades of living that I have ever seen a Sunday newspaper with so many for sale signs. For sale, for sale, for sale, or property to be taken up by the mortgagee or whatever as a result of persons losing their work 
in a system that this government has sought to send home the poorest of the poor, but kept themselves all employed, even if they have a half day job like the Honourable Member for Christchurch South. Bermuda took out some of the ministers to reduce the bill on wages for them, and they collapsed some ministry to make the difference. And I believe that this government could have followed suit with the Bermuda government. Madam Deputy Speaker, I want to find out from the Honourable Chief Ministers on the other side, what is the plan for new and better buses and a better managed transportation system to help the passengers to commute, particularly those from rural Barbados, who every day now for the past three weeks, one bus every four hours, hours to the Sturges location. People are losing their work. Some of them go back home and call to say I've fallen ill. From 7 o'clock sometimes in the morning until 9, 9.30. And to make it worse, the school children, ma'am, the future of Barbados, Grantly Adams School and the Allen School, those are the two words I can speak of in my area. Sometimes get into school at 10 and 10.30 or not at all. And in the evenings now from the last two weeks, Lester Vaughan children are standing at the bus stop to get to Sturgis 10 minutes, 15 minutes away, and they're not seeing a bus till half past four and five o'clock or until a neighbor gives them a lift. We know what is happening in our society with crime. And we will not let anybody's child to be molested, to be struck by a vehicle, to get into any kind of negative activity on the way from home, from school to home, or vice versa, on the way from home to school any day. I want to know what is the plan for new buses, ma'am. The taxi project at Sturges is the worst now. Two buses that are lame and a transport board bus that breaks down every other day. And we are suffering in Barbados. Barbados is not divided in two. Buses are going to Sam Lawrence Castle every minute. Our Prime Minister is treating regular visitors to the country or repeat visitors. And they have an assumption meal and we have Barbadians with nothing to eat. So when my neighbor said to me, I have nothing to eat, Miss Ford. I tried to get a pack of ramen, and I put the little four, three watts to cook my food, and I ended up with the rain coming down, washing away the wood and the rocks. There is nothing in here. A woman who was sent home after 13 years at the Ministry of the um, National Conservation Commission, 15 people in the household, nothing to eat. The Honorable Minister of Social Care can speak to what I said because I called him and I want to thank him for not thanking him for everything because he said some real strange things. But I'm thanking him because he knows I alerted him and he saw the situation. That's why they tell you, ma'am, I will speak the truth and speak it ever, cost me what it may. So I commend the minister for rescuing and assisting at that, that, that juncture, but that is more than a year ago. So you know the suffering continues because things are worse. I want to know where is the funding to assist parents, teachers, and, guard, and guardians, as well as guidance counselors and social workers to train, educate, institute measures to develop ways to treat the conflict and the kind of resolution that should be instituted to develop skills because our children are being bullied in most of the schools, if not all. What funding has been put in these estimates to be able to help these parents, guardians, teachers, and stakeholders who come on board and assist in our various schools? I am not feeling it, I'm not seeing it, but I'm hurt because this government has engaged a consultant to the tune of almost $8,000 a month to deal with children at risk and bullying. And I even hurt more, Ms. Madam Deputy um, Speaker, because I've put in a parliamentary question about bullying, asking the ministry since 2013 October, investigated, and every day we are hearing another incident at a school, school lockdown. Our schools are not war zones, and our children, according to the Honorable Minister of Education, are not children with demons. To my mind, the demons are on the other side of those ministers who are to carry out the work of this country and are playing the fool and passing the buck. And I put demons in inverted commas, ma'am. Madam Deputy Speaker, 
Where is the plan for the Scotland district? When we know that it is being made available of an, of a fund, an amount of funds in these estimates every year, and I know of a several million dollars that were to be affected. Dark Hall is now gone. White Hill is not gone, no gone. Bloomsbury is going, and this morning when I went to visit my, my late friend's place, Erie Court is on the verge of going, and there are so many other communities, ma'am. Where is the money and where is the action for rural Barbados? We have suffered enough with the water outages. What plan is there, ma'am, for the water outages um, to, for, to help to mitigate the challenge that we have with the water outages? What is the plan? We need a pumping station, a reservoir, something else in the north to help us. When I spoke to a lady this morning who called, she said, I can't talk to you now, my Arthur C. There's no water. And people are being asked to pay $80 per month to put in water tanks when they don't have $80 to pay the light bill or buy food or pay for the medical um, services where they have to pay a handling fee because some of the polyclinics just do not have the necessary medication for them. This government has pushed us into that stranglehold, strangle ma'am. What plan is there to officially open the State of Art School News Center in St. Philip that has been finished more than three years? What plan is there to open the state of our school me center in St. Philip? Our school children had lunch at 3 10 p.m. four Thursdays ago. Why is it happening? Where is the equipment to cook the food? How are those school me workers getting any ease to be able to feed the nation's children? If our children are hungry, if the meals are not quality meals, they just cannot function and take in that free education of which we boast. I would like to find out where in the estimates is there money for steam jacketed kettles, deep fryers, and all that to meet the needs of poor people's children because the honorable ministers on the other side, and I believe the ones over here, their children do not eat school meals. Their food is as secure and their transportation but the poor people's children are suffering as a result. Madam Deputy Speaker, ma'am, what monies, ma'am, or what funding has been enshrined in these estimates in this, uh, of expenditure to provide adequate projects for road building and maintenance? We know, ma'am, of the $5 million that was allocated for potholes. Two weeks ago, Thursday, six cars lost their tires, back and front, some of them, right in the streets of where the new police station will be in St. Thomas. The road there is very bad. I can see that the police station may be coming to fruition. But that road, that road, the minister is asking me if Kane Garden. That, the Honourable Minister does not even know the constituency because he offered me a visit, ma'am. I had officially written him in May 2013 after the general election to come to see the same Bloomsbury Road and Ericot and Canefield and so that have run to ruins now. And he will not even acknowledge, but he has gone on Saturday with a new candidate for St. Michael North to walk through without any proper notice. And then one of his colleagues in here, ma'am, the Honourable Member for St. Michael North, you should see Well Gap before. It is only recently because of all the calling and the confusion that Well Gap has had some roads patched. So the Honourable Minister knows of which, what I speak, the potholes, the broken bridges at Shop Hill, and so on. And we are in a perilous state in the parish, and I'm sure that it runs across the length and breadth of Barbados. And I am hurting again, ma'am, because I would not wish a Barbados Labour Party government, and I have been with the government since 1994 in a way, to be ostracizing any parish and not affording individuals, families, and people, the masses, of an opportunity for which they can improve the quality of their lives. Where is the money? What, ma'am, is the plan? And where are the funds for the Queen Elizabeth Hospital and a new one? It's a tired hospital, ma'am. It's worn down. 
And our millennium goals remind us of the health care that should be offered to our people. And we know that we have made many strides over the years, and I agree, especially the AIDS HIV project that was a birth, the birth of the child of a Labour Party. And I'm happy to say, see where we have gone. And there are many other projects that have continued, but I want to know where are we with the new hospital? Because when you look at this throne speech, it outlines so many things. But on paper, it is good. But for the implementation, it seems to be, it is a deficit on the part of this government. The Honourable Member for St. Philip um, West would have made mention of that earlier. Ma'am, Barbadians have grown accustomed to high standards and, and, and a, measure of in, a measure of independence, pride and industry, they want to work. And we know that the construction sector, the agricultural sector, the manufacturing sector, and international business were really operating in a way that many thousands of people got employment before 2008. Today, people are yearning. Yes, many of them have gone to the institutions to develop the skills, some of them have gone to do uh, their own businesses, but there's no money circulating in the economy the way they would like. So some of them are just floundering. And I want to know what plans are there for us to get these various sectors working again in a way that will attract international assistance, it will attract investors in Barbados, it will attract persons that they can carry out their projects as young entrepreneurs and be able to access the funding from Fund Access and so many other places. Something is definitely wrong with what is happening and there seems to be no hope with this tired, vindictive, democratic Labour Party government. Bam, I also want to say it has failed in the delivery of the goods that were promised in the manifesto. The manifesto of 2008 and then 2013, glossy, especially the 2013 glossy has ever come in with the Chinese that cost you less. And now, lo and behold, little or nothing happening with the pledges that were made by this Democratic Labour Party for Barbadians to get a better life. I want, ma'am, to refer to this same document that refers to the establishment of Integrity Commission, an Integrity Commission to facilitate, facilitate and, the implement, and uh, the implementation of A, Prevention of Corruption Act, B, to pass a Freedom of Information Act, and C, reform the management of public expenditure. I know that this day, ma'am, will not allow me to speak about public expenditure and cost overruns, and persons who say theater for a job it is $3,000, and then they're told by a minister, say or claim 10000 Where's the rest going? Ma'am, where is the rest going? I'm not going to talk about cost over runs. I am not going to talk. You want to know where? You will not know where by me today. I will whisper to the Honorable Minister of Education, who? I have a problem, ma'am, and you know I speak from a background of knowledge. I have a problem, ma'am, where... Our senior citizens are suffering. And I will speak to the Honourable Minister of Health, even though he's not one of my favourite persons, he deafens me. But I will speak to the Honourable Minister of, of Health on a matter that has been drawn to my attention this morning because it is, there are human beings involved and it is not something that I will make public. The Honourable Minister of Health told me, in here, ma'am, in a debate that we were doing, wait till my trough is put. That is where I see the disgrace and the disrespect because some people feel they were born in middle class environments and they can look down on who are poor. I was born in poverty, but I have risen to this level. It is an example for the rest of Barbados. People's children who feel that they have lost out on something, they can aspire to be like us, the member for St. Mike, St. George North, the member for St. George South, the other member for the city. I'm not even looking at the other members here because they might be a little better off when they were growing up. The Honourable Member for St. Christ Church South did that to me. When we were doing a debate on education and money for the university, he told me that I cannot speak on the issue because I did not benefit from a university education. And my retort, ma'am, was, 
I have been to the University of Common Sense, and that is why I'm here with you. So I will only whisper to him because it is a matter of public concern that I will never ever speak in public about it of the sensitivity. Ma'am, where are the new schools for children at risk? At risk. Our children are suffering. And there are limited programs for our youth in the Youth Affairs Department, where I have many young people who apply to the youth mainstreaming project that is the same as Project Oasis, and they are still at home yearning for something to do. It seems to me, ma'am, as though this Democratic Labour Party wants everything that must happen now to happen in St. Philip, Christ Church, and St. Michael's. And we in the north and the other sections of Babel St. John is getting something too. Although the roads up there, ma'am, are in a terrible disgrace. I can speak that for you, ma'am. You can't speak for yourself right there now. St. John needs help too. And the polyclinic needs a lot of work still, ma'am, having spent $39 million in a project that was to have cost either 15 or 20 million. But I will get to that in another place. Our children at risk must be looked after and we must be able to combat all of this decay in our society with the crime of violence. This government said in its manifesto in 2013, we want the Barbados to be economically balanced, socially balanced, Economically viable development, is, viable development is what we want. We want Barbados to be environmentally sound when the party says, and we want for good governance. The whole concept of good governance has been shunted to the ground. Only glitz and glamour and all the efficient inefficiencies that we can ever speak about, ma'am, are now taking place in this society. This Democratic Labour Party has destroyed not only the economy, but the society, because we were hearing this statement, uh, we're building an e a society and not an economy or whatever. However it was going, this government has been successful in destroying both. And I wonder if the honorable members on that side walk the streets. I do not have to walk with any security. Everybody knows Cindy. Everybody knows Cindy. Everybody said before, I want you to help. I want you to guide me. Who can I call? That is it. I don't want any security because I serve a risen Lord. I serve a risen Lord. But ma'am, I just want to say that I am ashamed of where we are now with the apparent leadership. And I believe the Eager 11 concept is what has our right honorable prime minister destabilized. Because for a person to be a prime minister for five years, uh, from between 2013 and now, and the other years that went right up after 2010 October, not to even identify among these honorable members here somebody to be called up front a deputy prime minister. He has to have doubts about every last one of them around this table. <laughs> doubts about every last one of them. Uh, 21 downgrades later, ma'am. The honorable prime minister does not say a word. I know he's a man who is of very few words but I believe that he understands what is happening. And he makes it, I know I'm talking ignorance. I will not be talking ignorance when I tell the honorable member for Christchurch South that he is a domestic violence offender. I will not be talking ignorance. I will not be. Ma'am, he's gonna make me get personal. The honorable member for Christ, for St. Philip West, I'm gonna digress a little bit because the destabilization of Barbados is not good. And you see this document, ma'am? I commend the civil servants and others because some of what is in here is what was recommended by the stakeholders in the unions and so for the last budget that we had. And I want to commend them because they too believe we can get some confidence coming through from this government. But the honorable member for St. Philip West, he does not know how I love him and respect him for all the years I've known him before he came to politics had reason to say to... Yes, Honourable Member. And what do you write? Disrupt the Honourable Member in her full flight, but she's misleading the Chamber to make the accusation which she made of this Honourable Member without a shred of any kind of evidence. So I would beg that the comments be struck from the record. Withdrawn and struck from the rear. I agree with that. The, the comments ought to be Madam, withdrawn. 
Honourable Madam Member. Deputy Principal, uh, excuse me, Madam Deputy Speaker, I will withdraw them. But the world knows, the whole of Barbados knows. Before now. <laughs> so I will withdraw them. <laughs> Have it struck for the record, ma'am. Since the Honourable Member has gone that route, I am, I am not going to worry with him now, ma'am. There's an opportunity. But I want to refer to the Honourable Member for St. Philip West, who when he has to speak up because he has a similar personality like mine, he does not mean ill, but he wants things to happen in his favor for the people of Barbados. Sometimes and this Honourable Member has been trying to get funding for this so his project for a few years now, and a Minister of Finance has not looked on him. I don't know if it's because of his height. Or what? But he has not got. So this I remember on February the 27th, 2015, would have sent a letter to the Right Honourable Prime Minister to do with the BA at the MC, BA MC. Fundamental breakdown in cabinet governance regarding the implementation of cabinet discussion with the, with the fidelity. And he was referring to the breakdown in governance of under the, the stewardship on February the 27th, 2015, of the Right Honourable Prime Minister. But he is not happy and safe with the Eager 11. And from the time the Eager 11 came up, the Honourable Member, that is the Minister of Education, got pet one side. And a different person came out to be the leader of government business. Unceremoniously removed, like they removed my good friend who died this morning. Ma'am, I want to say, it is a shame for the Honourable Minister of Finance to overlook agriculture, when so many thousands of people out there want to work in the land for the landless project. They don't want a lot of Rastafarians and others. They don't want to work for anybody. They want to work for themselves, but they want the hand up. They want the opportunity. They want the subdivision. They want the government to make a strong stand with some of the plantation and other property owners to lease out the land at least for a five-year period. And the honorable member for St. Philip West will agree with me, but he hasn't got that kind of help because he is not recognized in the way that some others are. He's not a blue eye boy. Madam Deputy Prince, uh, um, Speaker, I was dumbfounded yesterday and the members on that side will help me to understand it. I know that the police amendment was done a few weeks ago. And I know and I understand the concept, although there are a lot of things about it I don't like to speak with them otherwise. But I saw a video yesterday evening of what looked to me like four or five armored trucks in the port in Shed One, coming out of Shed One. I want to find out from these honorable members, ma'am, in these estimates, where are the new sanitation trucks when mine don't get collected till once a month? That is where I feel that money should have gone. Barbadians are civil minded people that they will obey the law. It is only one or two among us that will do foolishness. But those are the trucks, and it brought me back to the point where the honorable minister of education said before about quacking heads and shooting down people. And then the Marble member, Minister of Social Care, talks about running, blood running in the street with water next election. I do not understand the signs, ma'am, but I want explanations from this chamber about the expenditure that would have gone in for that kind of armory. Is that what you mean? Good. Where are the sanitation trucks, though, that we need to help clean up Barbados? We've not been lucky to get the open back trucks from other ministries to come and clean up in St. Thomas. And St. Thomas is one of the biggest dumping grounds in the whole of Barbados because it has a lot of remote villages. St. George, I was watching that as well. Yes, yes. And we are not getting the relief that we want. And I know that the sanitation workers are honest, upright workers, but because they do not have the equipment, they do not have the resources, they are doing what, the, what they can do the best way they can. We need some sanitation trucks. We need ambulances. We need fire trucks. We need buses like yesterday. And you callous there sitting down, being owed millions of dollars by the government. I am not touching rural Barbados now, because that is another discussion. But I will get a chance outside, because the days of this government are numbered. What about the VAT returns for Barbadians? What about my income tax? What about the income tax of poor people? What about the reverse tax credit that poor people got in August that will help them to be able to buy shoes and pay for the expensive textbooks that some of them don't even use in primary school? Or 
they can't pay for letter and textbook loan scheme. And I got some people in St. Thomas, ma'am, I walk with some letters today. I am begging the welfare department, please help them out before they deal with my friend too. Because if they can't pay the light bill, they can't pay the water bill. They can't feed themselves, they can't send to school the children as they would like. Never mind the bus fare is free. What am I going to do send in school my child at a secondary school with free bus fare? Be jinxing it, can't get nothing to eat because there's no money to buy a lunch at the school. I feel sorry for the school canteen people because a lot of them are not going anywhere. Is it sad? Some got five. One person with five. But I have a problem in understanding how poor people must suffer. So I need some welfare help. I believe that there are the honorable member and uh, for quite sure so could answer that there might be about a hundred bodies up at Queen Elizabeth Morgue where families can bury them. Families cannot bury though they're dead, ma'am, because there's no money. Absolutely none. Where is the money in this budget to assist those families, ma'am? That they can bury their dead with dignity. Where are they? The Honorable Minister will tell us as he would always do. Ma'am, I ask God to deliver Barbados from the stranglehold that the Democratic Labour Party has put it in. I know. I know. I remember you have two more minutes. Yes, ma'am. That the Israelites, when they were in Egypt, all the pestilences, all the challenges, some lost their lives. They were beaten. We came through the slave trade, and our four parents were brutally beaten. I want for this government to ease the backs, the pressure that they're laying on the backs of the poor people of this country, ma'am, and to help us to be able to live a better life. So I support the eight questions that were placed by the honorable leader here, the honorable member for St. Michael Northeast. And I want to know what is the level of the international reserves today, today, Tuesday, the 13th of February, the day before Valentine's Day. I want something to love. I want to know. And the eighth one, how does the Minister of Finance intend to create the fiscal room necessary to pay for the renewal of the crumbling infrastructure that is negatively in affecting our country, like the sewage system, the road, the buses, the garbage trucks, to name a few. And I add on school meals, because that is another area where there are a lot of challenges. And those school meal workers, may the Lord continue to bless them, man. They take to work the seasonings. They take to work the various things to flavor the food. And they work beyond human call to feed the nation's children. I close with one final up. question. Yes, please. I want the Honorable Minister of Culture and Sports to tell this chamber, because we're talking finances, how much money was spent when we celebrated the birthday of our icon, Rihanna for her 21st birthday. The public needs to know. How much, ma'am, was spent for Carrie Festa? How much was spent when Rihanna show happened under the Ministry of Tourism? How much money did Barbados work in? How much was spent, because we are taxpayers and we need to know, we gave back our 10%. And the final one, ma'am, how much was paid towards renaming the street in Westbury Road, the Rihanna Road, the Rihanna Drive, and I was happy that it happened. But what hurt me most is that the house they were living in, it was made to understand, was a rental house. So if the government has purchased the house, it is a viable entity, it will attract tourism, and so I would like, ma'am, for the Honorable Minister of Tourism, in association with this Honorable Member, for sports, culture, and so on, and the finance minister to tell the public of Barbados because we as taxpayers deserve to know. And I pray that Barbados will be rescued as the people of Israel did by a change in what is happening in this place so that the hopes and the aspirations You've gone over your and time, so on. I thank you, ma'am, and I appreciate you giving me the couple of seconds.